and greets the musicians onto the stage and hopefully sends them off at the end. But there's more to clapping than just applause. There's the flamenco clap. The artificial or simulated clap. There's the old Zen koan. What is the sound of one hand clapping? A 2,000 year old conundrum, which I'll be solving later. And then there's this. Clapping music. Undoubtedly the best known piece of music written solely for two or more pairs of hands by composer Steve Reich over 40 years ago. It takes a lot of concentration to clap in exactly the right place. How badly do people clap? One of the indicators of bad clapping, let's say, is that it is behind the beat rather than on the beat or even before the beat. But most commonly people clap behind the beat. And there's a concept called latency, which is used a lot in music production, in the, uh, you know, digital music production, where if a sound is less than 20 milliseconds after when it's supposed to be, you can't actually hear the difference. But after about 20 milliseconds, you start to be able to hear the difference. You start hearing a phasing, flanging effect. And so, uh, it's, so that kind of gives an idea. 20 milliseconds is quite a short period of time. You're hearing the beat, and then an organ in your brain called the basal ganglia is paying attention and saying, okay, this is where we want to direct our attention. And then the stimulant gyrus takes that information and says, oh, we want to turn that beat into hand clapping. And then that message gets sent through the cerebellum and uh, that whole process that I described starts anew every second or part of a second, depending on the, how fast or slow the beat is. Clapping exercises can do more than just aid a musician's timing and rhythmic skills. Al Guerra is president of the Interactive Metronome, an American company who have devised a training program that uses clapping exercises to help with autism, dyslexia, Parkinson's and poor concentration. In some ways, it's similar to the exercises the jazz students are doing. Most of us clap within a tenth of a second of each other. So if we're measuring in milliseconds, and I provide a beat to a rock concert, most people are going to be clapping within a hundred milliseconds of that beat. Between a hundred and two hundred, meaning they're a little farther away from the beat, those are your people that maybe you're noticing they're less coordinated. They're like, oh, this guy, he's, he's clapping a little bit late, or she's clapping too early. Once you get 200 milliseconds or more from the beat, that's a quarter of a second or farther, maybe a half second. That's a clear indication that someone has a clinical deficit between what they want to do and what they're able to carry out. And that's, that's something that can be diagnosed and treated uh, in this person because they're unable to do a very basic rhythmic activity. Right. And, and so if, if I was to, to be hooked up to an interactive metronome and discover that you said about some um, clapping outside of the 200 millisecond limit and clapping on time to the click what would the diagnosis be from that or would would there need to be further investigations to kind of discover the reasons for this if you if you were found to be clapping hundreds of milliseconds off the beat i could probably very quickly by asking you a few questions start to determine where your deficit might lie, but you would need to go and, and get the more extensive testing in order to come up with a with a diagnosis. This uh, the interactive metronome is really what's called an assessment. It gives you a score and it indicates something, but it's not one you could make a, a diagnosis with. But it sounds from talking to you that actually there's there's um, there's a real uh, importance to developing our rhythm rhythm skills. Would you agree with that? Uh, it's absolutely critical that we develop rhythm and timing in infancy and practice it through our childhood. It is it's at the basis of everything we do. We wouldn't be able to have this conversation, this give and take, where one of us pauses and waits for an answer, and then the other one speaks. And I wouldn't be able to sort out the words in a sentence if I didn't have the ability to pace myself with rhythmic time.